Hello everyone. Today we are going to continue the part of application of Gauss law in electrostatic. <coughs> so in last class or session we learned the Gauss law. So it's a very simple, and uh, we also learned that we can use it to find in a uh, to find electric field in a different cases. The first case we learn that is a Gauss law. Applicable for a thin uniform conductor or wire. So the second application is a two-dimensional. So that what we are going to find here today in second uh, application, uniformly infinite uniformly charged plane sheet. So it is a two-dimensional which which has infinite length and infinite width. So, how we can apply the Gauss law to find electric field or electric flux? <coughs> Actually, we are finding electric field equation. Okay, so how we can find it? Let's see. So, the, what we are finding? <coughs> electric field. uniformly charged plane sheet electric field of an infinite uniformly charged plane sheet ok so let's see so the plane sheet <coughs> so here the plane sheet can be considered this one. So we cannot draw a plane sheet in finite, but for a moment, for to understand to derive, we will consider plane sheet of this with then uh, this dimension. So it is some part of that infinite plane sheet, okay, which has unity area. Okay, fine. <clears throat> so this plane sheet has a very thick thickness, very small uh, thin surface. And so in this this plane sheet, we are going to if I draw this direction in the front front view, it will look like a rectangle, but we cannot see the other side. To draw the other side, I have to make a tilt it. I have to take a certain angle, three dimension. I have to make three dimension. So what I am talking this one. So here we will consider a plane sheet in this way and which is uniformly charged in finite plane sheet but uniformly charged so on this plane sheet the charges are uniformly stored so how many charges we don't know but we know the exact surface charge density we know what a density and that is surface charge density Okay, you can consider negative charges also. You will get the same solution, but be positive. So the positive charge there. So this is plane surface. We consider plane surface which is uniform charge and has an infinite length and width. But to find the equation, we have to consider Gaussian surface. Now the Gaussian surface, <coughs> you can consider any shape, but it has to be symmetric. Symmetric in the sense like this. Symmetric. A cube. Okay. So this symmetric. A cylinder, a sphere, or cube. So the shape should be symmetric. So here we will consider a shape, a cylindrical Gaussian surface, not a large in the size, small in size. So we will consider the Gaussian surface as small Gaussian surface but remember <coughs> it has a two sides this surface has a two side right so that's why we are this is one side of the Gaussian surface
Okay? So this is one side of the Gaussian surface. This is imaginary surface, so you can draw a dotted line. It has to be dotted line because it is imaginary, it is not real. Okay, next. <coughs> this surface is considered at a, from this shape to this shape as a some distance r. At distance what r? So here electric field at point r is in this direction. Okay, and the surface, <coughs> another half of the cylindrical surface is in this star, in this side. It is also at the same distance from the this part, and that is uh, why same distance here to here because we are considering symmetric Gaussian surface. So again, it is an imaginary surface. So when it is imaginary surface, again it is imaginary. Surface. Imaginary surface. Now, electric field in this direction is here. Now, this is what we have considered a imaginary surface like this. So, this is a plane shape I. Plane shape I. <coughs> A Gaussian surface through this. A Gaussian surface through this. Cement cylindrical symmetric Gaussian surface. Okay. So this half section of cylindrical surface is here and half is here. So this is the case. Right? So half on this side, on the half on the other side. So this is a cylindrical shape. Now it has three shape surfaces this cylindrical surface has three surface one surface is here another surface is curvature surface all over the length all over the this length and another surface is here so how many surface three surface one two and this three. now why am i talking about the surface because by use of basic definition of electric flux, definition or formula of electric flux, we are going to find the electric field equation of that plane sheet. So here A is what surface area through which this electric field is passing. Now in this our case, the electric field, look at it, the charges are here. So the electric field will be in this direction, in this direction and the third surface curved surface here the electric field the electric field is in this direction and another this direction but it is not over per in this way the electric field is not along the plane it is perpendicular to the plane the electric field it is perpendicular to this plane not along the plane why because the charges are closer to each other so electric field of this this and this or this in this direction or in this direction in this direction in this direction in along the plane the electric field of each charge get cancelled because of same charges cancel or repel each other but they are not going to move anywhere they are going to be same place they are not moving they are static at that place then where the electric field is the electric field is in this direction outward direction that is perpendicular to this then that's why the electric field is in this direction and here. It is not in this direction or perpendicular to this surface. So there are how many surfaces? Three surfaces. Okay. So this will be, I will consider this as a surface ds1, this surface ds2 and this surface ds3. Three surfaces we are going to consider. Okay. Now, this is what the actual construction of a diagram, actual theory, what we are writing here. Okay, let's write down the construction. <coughs> consider, consider 
a infinite and infinite consider an infinite uniformly charged plane sheet plane sheet uniformly charged plane sheet <coughs> with surface charge density yes we need to know the surface charge density with surface charge density so what is that density sigma and whose value is what Lamb, uh, charge per unit area charge per unit area so this is surface charge density now we need to consider Gaussian surface ok Gaussian surface now assume that a Gaussian cylindric cylindrical cylindrical surface perpendicular to the plane of the sheet like of length surface this much is r this much r so total length of that gaussian surface is 2r so this is what we have constructed now let's use the gauss law okay according to gauss law what we are finding here electric field equation okay according to gauss law Flux is equal to 1 by x0 times the charges involved by the Gaussian surface. So this is Gauss law. Now we need to replace this Q by the formula, by the symbol, by the term surface charge density. Okay. So let's write out. But surface charge density is equal to charge per unit surface area that is s okay so this is replaced surface charge per unit area so this can be written so this is written in the form of q is equal to sigma into s okay so we now replace this q value by this value so what we can write here what we can write here so sigma is equal, uh, flux is equal to flux is equal to replace the value of q put the q value from this equation that is sigma into surface total surface area divided by epsilon equation 1 so this is as per Gauss law now, now as per the basic the formula or definition of flux, by definition of flux, flux phi is equal to phi is equal to total electric field into surface area. So by this definition, we can write the total electric field. Uh, total flux E is equal to so what we can write phi is equal to sum of E bar dot ds bar why E bar dot ds bar because this is the electric field along this surface ok plus there are three surfaces here in, it is a general formula which is telling the surface but in this case, the surface is a one surface. It was a one. 
but here in this our case there are three surfaces so that's why the total electric field passes through each three surface that is here so e bar dot ds bar 2 plus summation of summation of summation of summation of <coughs> e bar dot ds bar 3 look at here so e is everywhere same why because it is a total electric field it is a total electric field and it is not going to change so obviously this constant but surface values are changes change this surface value is changed this value surface is different this value surface is different obviously there, these two surface values are same but this one is different Okay, that's why surface 1, surface 2, surface 3. Okay. <coughs> now, so this is vector form. Make it scalar. ds1 cos theta1 plus summation of ds2 cos theta2 plus <coughs> summation e ds3 cos theta3. Now, from here. Now then check this electric field for this first surface. The electric field is in this direction and surface is here. So it is perpendicular. So the angle between first surface and the electric field here or here, you can anywhere you can check it. It is 90 degree. So cos 90 theta 1 is from figure. Figure theta 1 is 90. And theta 2 is equal to theta 3 is equal to 0 degree. Why? Because the angle between the second surface and the electric field is 0. Why? Because both are in the same direction. Similarly, in this case, the electric field due to the third surface, uh, electric field in this direction and the third surface direction is our, both are in the same direction. That's why it is 0 degree. So, by this figure, we can say this value changes now what the values are changed summation so this becomes sorry this becomes zero no summation because cos 90 zero plus summation of e d s2 into d s2 plus summation of e d s3 now <coughs> now so e is a constant take outside now summation of ds2 only so summation of ds2 means what total surface and that is pi r pi a <coughs> sorry that is total surface yes you can take pi r square doesn't matter okay you can take pi r square but doesn't matter right now so summation e is constant take out the summation now ds3 what it is ds3 so ds3 again this time it is also cylindrical means circular surface circular surface area is pi r square but no need to write right now you can consider pi r square doesn't matter here also pi r square here also pi r square because radius of this this cylindrical is same and surface area will be same so this flux gives 2 e yes this is second equation so we got two equation of a flux the first one and the second one now from equation from equation <coughs> first and two from equation one and two what we can write two e yes is equal to Sigma into S divided by epsilon naught. Right? So surface surface get cancels. So E is equal to sigma divided by take this two on the right side to epsilon naught. So this is the electric field in the form of surface charge density. Whose electric field? 
it is the electric field of an uniformly plane infinite uniformly charged plane shape and its value is e is equal to sigma by 2 epsilon naught now where the value it is actually it is the value where we consider cylindrical surface so distance you can write in the form of distance also no matter okay but you have to write convert your to sigma into form of <coughs> distance or area form so this is the equation of an electric field of an plane uniformly charged sheet with the surface charge density sigma now value of a sigma is a different value of sigma is a different how it is different it is in for density different in the sense of positive and negative if the surface contains all the positive charges the sigma will be positive charge surface density and if the surface contains all the negative charges or even you can consider negative charges are major positive charges are less but such cases may be possible but our in this unique case what we are taking all the charges are negative so the surface charge density obviously becomes negative so because of that reason now the electric field is different for positive charge, obviously the electric field is away from the plane sheet. Away from the plane sheet. If the surface or the charges on this sheet, charges on this sheet are negative, then the electric field will be inward. Electric field will be inward. But formula is the same. Okay? It depends. <coughs> On the direction, on the direction will be changed on the type of charges. Okay, so this is the equation of electric field of an plane sheet. So this is the second application of a Gauss law in electrostatic. Now the third application. What the third application? So let's see the third application. <coughs> third application is electric field electric field of uh, due to uh, electric field are outside electric field outside and outside the spherical spherical shell electric field at outside the spherical shell so here you have to imagine or we have to imagine a ball any a ball cricket ball tennis ball football volleyball so the same structure we have to consider so here is a spherical shell of radius r you can consider capital r or small it depends on you r1 r2 you can consider so i will consider standard r for a spherical the radius of a spherical shell so which is uniformly charged again i will choose positive charge it depends on you how many charges you can see. So I will show you much more positive charges. Okay, this surface is completely uniformly charged. The surface of the spherical shell is charged. For example, a spherical ball, cricket ball or okay, holy ball, and the charge is all over the surface of the charge. There is no place where you can find an empty space. Everywhere the charge is stored. So, because of such a system, what is the total electric field at outside this? Now, that's why the first what we are finding outside. So, the electric field outside this spherical ball. So, to find that electric field, we have to consider again a Gaussian surface. So, now Gaussian surface. So, what kind of Gaussian surface we can consider? Spherical. It should be symmetric. You can consider rectangle or cubic surface. But at corner, the distance is different from the center because 
it is diagonal. The distance here to here is different. So it can't be a symmetric. That's why we cannot consider everywhere whatever we want. In this case, the spherical surface should be spherical only. Gaussian surface. So okay. We will consider a Gaussian surface at a spherical at a distance. Oh, this is a square circle, proper circle. Okay, so this is a spherical surface, Gaussian surface. So if this Gaussian surface, draw a dotted line. Gaussian surface at a distance. R. You can consider R distance at any direction, doesn't matter, a small R. Now, electric field in this direction. You can find electric field direction anywhere. So, this is at this place, a small patch is drawn. Why small patch? And we are going to find electric field at that surface. So, this is electric field direction and the surface direction ds bar. So this is surface, small surface ds, this is electric field passing through it and the direction of this is the same. So angle between them is 0. So this is a Gaussian surface which is imaginary, this is spherical surface on which positive charges are stored. Now this ball of the surface is a shell, shell means inside it is empty. So there are no charges inside the shell. That's why. Here we cannot use volume surface, uh, volume charge density. We cannot use volume charge density because it is not a field, it is not a volume charge density. But the charges are stored on the surface, that's why it is, we have to again consider surface charge density. So this is complete construction. This is a point P where we are finding the electric field. By using that, we are going to find total electric field. So this is surface center O. Small radius of that Gaussian uh, surface, capital R, radius of that spherical surface. This is the construction. Let's write down the theory. Consider a spherical shell of radius R charged with charge with surface charge density sigma whose value is q by s total surface ok surface charge density s ok now assume assume Gaussian surface, a spherical, uh, uh, spherical Gaussian surface surface at distance R from center of shell. Spherical shell. Okay, this is just construction. Now again the same method, same step according to according to what? According to Gauss law. Gauss law. What it says? Flux is equal to 1 by epsilon naught into Q. I can replace this Q by the surface charge in this sigma. But surface charge in this sigma is equal to charge per unit surface. This implies from this we can write sigma charge is equal to sigma into yes. Put this value in this equation what we get flux is equal to sigma into yes divided by epsilon naught. Equation 1.
okay so this is what we got the flux equation now now the flux by definition what we are finding a flux equation by definition by definition of flux what it says flux is equal to okay so let's write properly <clears throat> by definition of what we got the first equation by definition of electric flux phi is equal to e into ds sorry yes so this is general formula now we have write in our way the d <coughs> phi is equal to sum of e into e bar dot ds why we got where why we are writing the sum why we are writing sigma this capital sigma to write the sum so instead of sigma we can say this sum symbol we can write integration there are different way to uh, find out the Integ uh, sum or you can use integration why we are writing integration of the sum symbol because we are finding a value of its electric flux through a small surface area then how to find total surface area so such a surface area are added to get total so addition is nothing but summation and the very small fraction addition is nothing but integration so same way so integration summation you can do it <coughs> Okay, so this is indeed uh, sum. So sum of such flux, sum of such a small surface area flux will give total flux. That this is total flux and this is a small flux. Small flux of all surface will give total flux. Okay, sum of E ds cos theta. Now theta is the angle between this ds and the E, which is but theta is equal to 0 degree. Why? Because both are in the same direction. Which implies cos theta cos 0 is 1. So therefore flux is equal to summation of E into ds. Now in all over the surface, all over the Gaussian surface of the here, the electric field is a constant or the same. So flux is equal to E is taken outside the summation. E is taken outside the summation. Who is left? Sum of a small surface. Sum of a small surface. The meaning of this is what? Look at here. 2x plus 4x plus 3x minus 5x. So which common? X is common. X is taken outside. 2 plus 4 plus 3 minus 5. So Total will get. Similarly, okay, similar way here it is. E is common everywhere. E is common everywhere in the addition. So take outside, keep the summation of the values. Now summation of this surface area. Summation of this surface area. So what do we get here? Addition of such a small patch surface area, we will get total surface area of this. We will get total surface area of this. Okay, and that is how much? 4 pi r square. What it is? 4 pi r square. So this flux is equal to, okay, I will add this first equation here. Sigma s yes, divided by epsilon equation 1. So phi is equal to E into bracket. So addition of some, uh, such a, addition sum of such a small area will give surface area surface. <coughs> Okay, spherical surface area, spherical Gaussian surface area. So that is E is equal to E into 4 pi r square. Remember, this r should be small because that is, this is a Gaussian surface area. We are not using the surface area here. Why? Because we are finding the electric field at this place or on this surface. Gaussian surface, not on the 
surface of the shell. We are finding the electric field on the Gaussian surface at distance r. That is why it should be r. So, this is equation 2. Now, from equation 1 and 2, from equation 1 and 2, from equation 1 and 2, E into 4 pi r square is equal to sigma into e. Okay, okay, sigma into yes surface area into epsilon naught. <coughs> okay, so we should have done. We shouldn't have converted this sigma value. We should have kept as it is. Okay, I will make the changes, small changes. So we'll keep this sigma. Okay, let's put the value. Okay, put the value of second equation, uh, first equation that is here. Right? Yes, we substituted the value here. Now the area is here different. This area, yes, is different from this equation because we found the area of this surface is four pi r square. What it is? Four pi r square. And this sigma into s is the surface area of this spherical shell, which is different. Spherical shell, uh, this shell surface area is different, it is small. And the Gaussian spherical surface area is different because both have different, uh, different sides. So, so, we cannot cancel this area. So, what to do? Again, we have to substitute the value of uh, this sigma q by yes put this yes value sorry uh, put this value actually we shouldn't have converted that so put the value of sigma into yes is equal to q put this value here so what we can write p is equal to 4 pi r square this value is q divided by epsilon naught take this e uh, this 4 pi r square on the right side so e is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 4 pi epsilon naught q divided by r square right so this is the equation this is the equation of an electric field outside this spherical shell this outside shell where the surface Gaussian surface is considered so this is the electric field outside the shell now <coughs> let's see electric field inside the shell so if we consider the cases special cases this is the first case we saw outside the shell exactly we got this equation if we consider a shell uh, electric field inside this shell so we, it has to be a Gaussian surface so Gaussian surface considered which is inside so where are the charges the charges on the surface of the shell and Gaussian surface is inside the surface of the inside the spherical shell. Meaning of this is the charges are not inside this Gaussian surface. The charges are not inside the Gaussian surface. So because of that reason and the by Gauss law, the Gaussian surface or the surface must contain enclosed charges. If there are no charges inside the Gaussian surface, the flux is zero. So this surface do not enclose any charges. According to definite uh, statement of Gauss law, this is this flux is equal to one by mu naught times charge one by mu naught times the charges enclosed by the enclosed by the surface. So this is the surface encloses these charges. So there is a flux. If the surface do not contain any charges, flux is zero. So inside spherical shell, electric field equation, electric field is zero. Outside the spherical shell, electric field is this much. Okay, now third case. On the surface of the shell, means here, 
where the charges are there. If we consider Gaussian surface, this surface here, what will happen? Yes, there is a presence of electric flux because on the surface charges are there and that is the surface. So, which is enclosed the charges. The electric field on the surface of the charge, on the surface of the spherical shell will be this much. Why this values only change? <coughs> sorry, sorry, uh, there is a difference. <coughs> Okay. Ah, so on the surface, the distance, check the distance of the Gaussian surface, it is same. So only R is replaced by this R. So this is spherical uh, electric field because of this spherical shell outside the surface, uh, sorry, outside the spherical shell is this much. The electric field because of this spherical shell inside itself, inside anywhere, there is zero. The electric field because of that spherical shell on its own surface is this one. So this distance is distance of a point or the Gaussian surface from the center of the spherical shell. This distance is a radius of that spherical shell. Okay. So this is the electric field. These are the electric fields because of the Gaussian. So sorry, this is the electric field of a spherical shell outside inside sorry inside on the surface outside inside and on the surface on the surface now these equations are in the form of distance and charge what if those are we write in the form of surface charge density, it will be like this. It will be like this. Obviously, this is 0. No need to write this one. And this equation becomes this. Why? How this to get removed? Check. This is the distance from center to here. And this is the distance here to here. Now, what if this distance r is reduced to this? Means both the distance become same. R become equal. In this case, and so r r get cancels remains one. So this equation of a electric field in the form of surface charge density for a spherical shell. This is the equation of an electric field of an spherical shell in the form of surface charge density. Please remember this equation. Okay. So, this is the electric field of a spherical shell. Outside, inside, on the surface. Now, if, okay, this is equation, different equation. Now, if you look, have a closer look of this surface, uh, this equation. Choose any one equation. Both look like the equation of, what we call the equation of a electric field because of a charge at a distance ok distance um, aspect. so what it looks like it looks like a equation of electric field due to a point charge this is the point charge not like a spherical shell this is a point charge positive point charge and its electric field around it at a distance, at a distance, okay, x, at a distance x, at this place electric field is this much. We already seen this equation after the definition of electric field. So it looks like it's the same. Everything is same. This is distance. If what we if this distance is r, so this equation becomes r square. What if this distance is r? So it becomes R square. So mean why I'm writing, why I'm explaining this? Because this spherical shell, this spherical shell looks like a point charge. Or this spherical shell acts as a point charge. So means what if there is a shell which is empty, inside empty, but charges are on the surface, which is completely charged with a uniformly charged. 
that surface spherical surface can be considered a point charge that's why i am explaining here or uh, that may ask a question now remember so these derivations ask uh, asked in a annual examination among these three application the second application is asked twice and the third this application outside the spherical shape this also asked twice so the uh, question is like this obtain an electric field due to spherical shape outside its <coughs> or another uh, application equation derive an expression for electric field of <coughs> due to infinite plane sheet uniform plane sheet so these two applications are asked twice or repeated repeatedly asked okay so please do study and remember these equations to find out so there are they may have many times they have asked the one must question what is the electric field inside the spherical shell so it is zero inside the spherical shell is zero so electric field outside the surface this is the equation so electric field on the surface of electric so in on the surface this outside surface this much so those are important derivations so please do derivations properly they may ask, they have repeatedly asked for five marks okay thank you we will continue the numericals of this whole topic from the next class so this theory part of the first lecture or first topic is completed so the theory part of electric charges and fields is over now in next lecture we will continue the numerical part of this topic thank you stay home stay safe